So that now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and this is ready to pressurize the, the reservoir. On most of the gold valve shocks, we're going to use 175 PSI. There are a couple of things about nitrogen pressure that are, there's actually some old wives tale about it. But what we want to do uh, is use 175 PSI. If you have too little pressure, the pressure actually helps the seal seal. Too much pressure will create excessive seal drag. Too little pressure will create cavitation behind the piston, or in other words, foaming. So you want to uh, basically use either what's recommended from the factory or, like in this case, what's recommended from Racetech. And typically, we're going to use 175 PSI. Now, what I've just done is walked over into one of the workstations over here. We actually have nitrogen, high-pressure nitrogen, manifolded to, to the stalls. And uh, this is the nitrogen pressure gauge with uh, uh, on-off valve, a bleed valve, and this actually depresses the valve core. Depending on your particular application, what type of shock you have um, will determine what type of pressurizing equipment that you'll need. This is something that we actually made up, and you can, you can either purchase a uh, nitrogen pressure gauge regulator and a nitrogen bottle from local welding supply place, or you can go down to most good quality uh, uh, motorcycle shops, and they can, they can actually pressurize the shock for you. Typically, uh, I would say that most people won't charge you more than, say, five bucks to, to actually do that. Once you have nitrogen in the shock, you, what you want to do is take and compress the shock shaft and then let it come up, making sure that it does come up and it comes up all the way. If it doesn't come up all the way, that indicates that you've got the wrong volume of fluid in here. In other words, the bladder is pressed all the way out to the very edge and it's no longer creating pressure against the, against the shock shaft. This is particularly critical with a, uh, a piston type reservoir because what will happen is sometimes guys will install the shock incorrectly and the piston will be down at this end and uh, what will happen is, is that the, the, the piston will actually be at the end and it will no longer be creating pressure and the shock won't work properly. Um, also, just an important thing to note is that this reservoir is mostly filled with nitrogen. It is not mostly filled with air. If you have way too much fluid in here, what can happen, or if the piston is in the wrong position on a, on a piston type shock, you can actually, by stroking the shock, you can actually blow the end of the shock shaft off and have a, a catastrophic failure. So you want to make sure that you have the proper amount of fluid in, in your shock. Again, if any of this disagrees with anything in your manual, make sure that you go by your manual. Uh, and you want to check that out. But, but this will be, in general, will be a good way to, to put your shock together. Now, after we have the shock assembled, check to make sure that the stroke's proper. We want to set, do some initial settings. Rebound and compression. You can either start out where you were before, or there should be something recommended either by the, by, uh, from your factory manual, or if there's something drastically different, will be re recommended in the gold valve instruction chart. Once you have set those settings, and they'll be difficult with, excuse me, they'll be different with Showa and Kayaba. Then what you want to do is select the proper spring and assemble and set the, the, the spring set length. Now, if your preload was correct before, you want to just go ahead and set the preload back to where it was. Again, there's, there's something else to note here, too, is that some of these springs have a smaller coil on one end and a bigger coil on the other, and so they'll only fit one way. But uh, this particular one goes this way. Then we put the collar on and the clip. And then make sure that's seated properly and go ahead and spin this up. And we can measure our set length, and obviously it's not set properly right now, but what you, what you can do is measure where you were exactly before. If your preload was correct before, if your race egg was correct before, it'll be correct again if you set the same set length. And then go ahead and lock down your locking collar um, with the tool that you made when we started out here, which was just the chisel with the 90 degree edges on it, and go ahead and, and hit that with a hammer and lock it down. Now one thing that's uh, uh, important too, especially on shocks with aluminum collars, is put a little grease on these threads. It'll, it'll help keep this lubricated, keep it from galling up. And it'll also allow you to, to be able to adjust this while it's on the shock, or excuse me, while the shock is on the bike. Um, 
Now that pretty much is it as far as the, the shock assembly is concerned. What you obviously want to do is things like spend some time maintaining your linkage, everything from the heim joints in the shock to the linkage on the, on the bike. Obviously you can have the greatest shock in the world, but if the linkage is garbage, uh, it won't do you much good. Now what you want to do, once you have the shock on the bike, you want to go ahead and check race sag. Race sag in a nutshell is how much the bike settles with the rider on board. In other words, it'll be the difference between fully extended, the bike up on the crate, and the rider on board. Now a lot of people know this, but there are a couple of things that are little, little things that we do a little bit different around here. Number one, we do it with the rider standing on the pegs. Now the reason being is that it's always consistent. You can't move your butt back and forth and, and have, it, have, it, uh, have it be different. The other thing that we do is we actually take into consideration that a bike actually has drag in the linkage. And you may have taken race sag and bounced around it and done, taken three or four measurements and noticed that you get different race sag numbers. Well, the way that we handle that is we'll actually push down on the bike about an inch and then let it come up very, very, very slowly once we actually take the bike off the crate and, and, and measure with the, uh, the bike with the rider on board. Push down on the bike, let it come up very, very slowly, measure it wherever it stops. Don't bounce on it. Obviously, if there were no drag in the linkage, it would continue to come up a little bit farther. Then lift up on the rear of the bike and let it come down very, very slowly. Again, where it stops, you measure it. The, where it will be with no drag in the linkage is it would be right in the midpoint. Obviously, that'll tell us a couple of different things. Number one, the greater the difference between pushing down and letting it come up, pulling up and letting it come down, the greater the difference, the worse your linkage is. So if you've got a linkage that's got, say, 10 millimeters or more of difference between pushing down and pulling up, you know you've got some serious work to do on your linkage. You've got some serious bind. Uh, a real good linkage is less than three millimeters difference between pushing down and pull, pulling up. One of the things that's, that comes in real handy as far as measuring race sag is our little sag master here. So I'm, I'm going to plug another product. This is a uh, 9.95 retail. Now the only difference between this sag master and a regular tape measure is this little nub right here. What we do with the little nub is this goes into the rear axle, into the hole in, in hollow rear axle. What that allows us to do is bring up the tape measure and lock it onto a position on the frame. I like to use the rear of the silencer. Once it's locked on, then when you take the bike off the, off the crate and you put the rider on board, all you do is you come down here and you read sag directly. So this is just one of those little things that you look at and you go, well, <laughs> that's simple. Uh, why didn't I think of that? But uh, it's just one of those things that we have to assist you in helping you set your suspension up even easier. Now, what we've done is we've really talked only about disassembly and assembly and goal valve installation. We really haven't talked about tuning. Um, tuning is a whole nother subject and understand too that anything that we do there are going to be certain riders that aren't going to like the very first initial setting so certainly you can play with it yourself but feel free at any time to call race tech we have a technical support hotline for just those kind of questions because what our goal is is to have your suspension set up so that it's the best in the world now again the other thing too is uh, Stay tuned for future videos and logbooks for actual suspension tuning. And again, if you ever have any questions, certainly feel free to call Race Deck. Thank you.